Greetings and welcome to my review of Cloudy G3 version 1.3. Um, I have been out of it for a little while. I've been very extremely actually busy with work and uh, have not allotted myself enough time to be able to continue the reviews. However, I am back and hopefully we can get back to a regular schedule with these guys and uh, we'll keep pumping them out. So again, this is the update from version 1.2 that I've already reviewed and if you have questions or you're curious about uh, a lot of the things that initially come with Cloudy G3 check out my version 1.2 review first and then watch this one because this is going to be very brief it's going to be an update I've actually brought this ROM for over two weeks which is like a record for me uh, since I started flashing ROMs and doing reviews so <clears throat> what can I say about this um, well I can say a lot of things actually um, there's, there's bug fixes here there are plenty of users who are still reporting issues with theirs um, and I'm not sure if it's just the different variants, but in my experience, the only thing I can really complain about is I do seem to get some uh, micro lag here and there the longer I use the phone. And it took about four days before my battery life really settled in properly. So a little bit longer for the battery life, that might be just a device specific thing but it was something that I did notice. And then the keyboard, the G3 keyboard for whatever reason in this version uh, and I installed this on two LG G2 D800s and on both of them the keyboard was just horrible with autocorrection uh, it made no sense whatsoever and um, you can turn the autocorrection off but uh, part of the benefit of having such a nice keyboard was the autocorrection so I switched back to Swift, Swift Key and Swift Key uh, I don't know what's going on again with this G3 ROM and Swift Key but most of the time I can type no problem but there are times when I get uh, lag. It stays behind. It doesn't uh, keep up with my taps. And uh, for some other reason, when you go to capitalize a letter and then type the next letter, it doesn't seem to catch that letter. I'll see if I can't reproduce that on video. Going real quick, showing you through here, you'll see, uh, obviously, if you have been using a lot of ROMs and using a lot of LG-based ROMs, you're going to notice that this is the stock DPI but my settings are not and that's because I used app settings with exposed to change individual applications I changed their DPI I find it to be a lot more useful at around 380 to 400 DPI um, with such a nice large screen and uh, a beautiful screen like this it just goes to waste in my opinion at 480 DPI which is what it comes with so going through here, you're not going to see anything that you're not expecting to see on a G3 ROM. One thing that was nice and pleasant about this version, though, is that the uh, Wi-Fi hotspot is working now. I didn't have to make any changes to my build prop either, and I had LTE. So the Aroma installer seems to be doing all that extra work that we were doing before about having to go in and change the build prop. It seems that Aroma installer has been fixed, and uh, art support is there. It works. You know me and LG ROMs, I have to have my exposed. I can't wait for Android L to come out, whatever they're going to call it, and that the hopeful follow up from Rovo with some exposed that supports art. It will be a fantastic day indeed. Until then, this is how I have to use my phone. I have to be in Dalvik and I have to be uh, using some exposed modules, especially for my DPI. For those of you who are familiar with the G3 ROMs, of course you see this nice blended status bar up here. It captures the color of the application below it. Most of the time I find that it works quite well. I haven't really seen too many instances. Nothing really worth mentioning where it doesn't. Slide down, you get this beautiful notification shade. It's one of my favorite parts of this ROM. It might sound trivial, but I find the notification shade is a very important piece of the ROM since you're constantly wanting to slide it down to see your notifications and to quickly have access to changing settings like your Wi-Fi, your Bluetooth, your location, etc. And you can change these, obviously, just as you can in any other LG ROM and make them uh, appear in the order that you find most useful. And then, of course, I use an exposed module um, to be able to hide my brightness and volume sliders by simply pressing and holding the settings button. The user interface I find uh, is to be pretty fluid. Um, the verdict is still out though. I can sometimes, again, it seems like if you don't reboot the phone uh, every other day maybe that uh, I was having some issues. And I also had to crank my brightness a little bit brighter 
than normal for my default brightness. Um, not sure if maybe it's just a device specific thing, but uh, or maybe my eyes are changing. I don't know, but I did find myself where as I usually hang out at around 65% brightness on the default setting, I found myself higher up into the upper 80s and 90s to be real comfortable. And just in case you're wondering, here is uh, we're running Android 4.4.2. This is the updated baseband kernel build number and software version. As you see, there's Cloud G3 1.3. And uh, again, overall, my experience with this, I spent over two weeks on it. So if there were going to be gripes, I'd have uh, found them. Uh, the only gripes, again, I have are uh, very minor. The usability of this ROM is, um, well, it's very good, actually. And uh, I use it on my wife's phone, and she's not a technology person, and it works. And she has no issues with it. Haven't had to reboot her phone or, or anything. And that's real nice because because she doesn't have a technology background, you should be able to flash this on somebody's phone and just use it. And uh, honestly, the aesthetics are more appealing on the G3 style ROM than on the G2 style ROM. But again, that's just a preference. Uh, there are those that would argue that the Flex style ROM is more attractive. And I am more drawn towards the Flex style ROM than I am the G2 style ROMs. But again, I still prefer the G3 style over the two. When we talk about cameras, check my original review uh, for Cloudy for uh, Cloudy G3 ROM because the camera, while it has improved, uh, the picture of taking is pretty much the same. You only have one camera now; you're not stuck with two, um, and it takes pictures rather quickly, focuses focuses fast. I didn't find any features that weren't working. I did not test 4K video. I had no reason to record any 4K video. Uh, however, I did check the forms and nobody's reporting any issues with 4K video. There are those that are still choosing to flash other cameras with their phone. And I say more power to them, whatever they like. Really, with the hardware that we have here and the software working properly, it's about preference, really. It's about your interface preference. And the interface on the camera here is very simplified. As you can see here, you just tap to take a picture. Uh, or focus and you can tap your take a picture. And of course, you know, it's having a real hard time right now because there's nothing really to focus on there. You can go through here. I find the interface to be very simple, very clean, quick, easy. There you go. And you can do things like, there you go. All right. Either which way, again, the camera application, it just works. I've had no problems taking pictures, and I will go ahead and show you some of those example shots now. For those of you that care about free RAM, here we are, uh, 686, 847, sometimes I can get it over, sometimes I can get over 870, but it's like we're hanging around 842. On a fresh reboot, I could hang around 0.93 gigs, but that doesn't last very long. It does seem that the G3 ROMs tend to work this way. It's just to be expected. Have I run out of memory yet? No, I have not. So I'm not really concerned about it. It does work. It does function. Granted, the G3 does actually have 3 gigs of RAM, and so that might explain why there is a little bit higher RAM usage. But really, it's not all that much higher than what you get on an LG G2 ROM. LG2 based ROM, I should say. And one of the features, again, that I like about this G3 uh, ROM I'm going to show you over here is this LG Health Tracker. It does a pretty decent job. I did kind of trick it a couple times and see that it wasn't recording steps accurately, but for the most part, it seems like it's capturing steps um, more often than not. And so what's depicted there is at least a minimum to build off of. And then, of course, you can press it again, and you can kind of scroll up, and you can see what you did the day before, and the day before, and the day before. These numbers aren't very high because I have been swamped at work. But anyways, it's just a nice feature, and I find the app to be very well implemented into the OS, um, and I applaud LG for that. Some complaints again, um, some new ones actually. The My4 Touch still has not been fixed, so what happens with this ROM is when you have My4 Touch, 
and it might be other head units that utilize MAP, I'm not sure. But the MAP Bluetooth protocol, it continues to try to run. And so it's a constant wake clock and it constantly draws, drains the battery. But the text messages do work through the system, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there. This wasn't a problem in version 1.1. This, this problem actually presented itself in 1.2 and higher. Not exactly sure what's changed. And because of all the off topic and really just useless posts in the form, we'll probably never get an answer because I'm pretty sure Cloudy doesn't want anything to do with that ROM anymore. I think the only reason he even did an update is so they can stay out there because there were some people who were using it. Uh, I'm sure he's using it himself and enjoying it. That's just a speculation and a guess. But I mean, really, it's just. He cannot be expected to read these posts. And, and to give you an example, when I did my 1.2 video, they were at 1,246 posts. In that time frame, we are now at 5,293 posts. And that's just at the time of making this video. That's insane. That's insane. Um, back on topic, though. Uh, Bluetooth streaming works just fine. Sound is just as you expect it to be with Bluetooth streaming. It worked just fine with Kia Uvo. It synced first time every time. Had no problem resyncing when I got in the vehicle. One of the nice things I like about using a G3 bass ROM, especially um, what I've observed with this one, is if I'm using Google Play Music and I exit my truck and uh, I go shopping, I come back in the truck, turn it back on, it automatically reconnects to Google Play Music. It doesn't get confused, it doesn't just sit there on Bluetooth and start playing your ringtones or whatnot. Something I really wish Android would kind of work on is as a, a smarter way for music players not to play your ringtones in the music players. It's, it's, it completely turns me away from using the media player as an actual media player and putting content on my phone uh, and instead I just stream it. Minor nuisance, minor annoyance. You do have the advanced power menu built in here, just like you did in the last one. You do have the included Tahitian theme pack, as you see here. So um, you do get these nice options that you don't get with the Optimus G3, or at least not right now. The FM radio, of course, does not work with the D800, but does report work with other models, the ones that actually come with the working FM radio. Other things to concern yourself about are heat, but that's just a Snapdragon 800. Uh, nothing really our phone specific just be cognizant of it be aware this there I had no problems with MMS or SMS I used the stock messenger application for about three days and then I switched to Google Hangouts because it's what I prefer to use and um, I just like the way the interface is and I like the fact that I can combine my hangouts and my text messages they just work this ROM is fantastic it works well um, again micro lag here and there small complaint I really wish somebody would fix the Bluetooth map protocol. And uh, I did test this with Dormex kernel. And uh, well, let's go through the battery results. Here you go, we're going to go through some of these battery test results. We're at 31% right here, 19 hours, 32 minutes off the charger, 4 hours and 9 minutes of screen on time. And as we come back over here, you're going to see that this was me really using the, the phone a lot more during the last 3 hours. So the projected estimated remaining time, if we take that, and we kind of consider the fact that uh, the way it's calculating battery usage, if I were to constantly use it with the screen on, I would at least expect to see another hour and a half to two hours added on there. So at, at least five and a half hours, six hours screen on time, really nice to see. We're moving on here. You got 10%. I was at 18 hours, 23 minutes. Again, the last three hours were really trying to kill the battery. 37% used five hours and three minutes of screen on time. And according to this, I was still had another hour of battery use left. And looking at how high that last three hours is, I would suggest that's probably going to um, uh, estimate that I'm going to continue to use the phone with the screen on. So again, you're at another almost six hours of screen on time. Going through here, so just some of the wake clocks that we discovered. This is that Bluetooth. Uh, starting OBEX map transaction that keeps the phone awake the entire time and seems to really drain the battery. Going on, we're not going to worry about that one. That was because I was going to reboot the phone. 11 hours, 42 minutes, 38% left. 3 hours and 9 minutes of screen on time. This was with Doramax Kernel, so it worked pretty well. Another one, Doramax Kernel, 15 hours, 36 minutes, 13% left. Again, last 3 hours was 38% used. And it says still an hour and 10 minutes of battery of uh, usage left. So we're going to take those figures and factor it into the 4 hours and 3 minutes of screen on time. And we're going to easily say that, again, we would have reached the 5 hour plus marker. Not my best day, but again, this was Doramax Kernel. Here's another one, 18% left, 16 hours, 19 minutes, off the charger, 27% used in the last three hours, 
It estimated I had two hours and 12 minutes left with 18% of battery life. Three hours and 27 minutes, again, this is Dormas kernel. This is some of that time period where it seemed like the ROM took a little bit longer. But part of that, again, is this OBEX. The longer I'm in my truck, the worse my battery life is. This was something I noticed from Google now that I wasn't getting before was that you know, I put seasonal notifications in here about road work when I'm traveling. So that was kind of nice. I just threw that in there for you. Continuing on, 44% off the charge for 23 hours and 10 minutes. I had 17% in the last three hours, and it said I had eight hours and 28 minutes to go. Let's see here. Three hours and seven minutes of so that was screen on time. So, I mean, we can extrapolate here that I would have very, probably very easily broken the uh, six hour marker, depending on how we use the phone. Continuing on here, we're going, okay, we're not going to use that one. Here's another one, 18 hours, 5 minutes off the charger, 24% left, 3 hours, 15 minutes was estimated, 19% in the last 3 hours, you can see the little dip there, 3 hours, 59 minutes, screen on time, so looking at there, again, we'd have broke 5 hours easy, those are my wake clocks, don't worry about that, another one, 15 hours, 44 minutes off the charger, I can keep going guys, this is going to be pretty similar all the way throughout, because again, I did test this for a very long time time. Here's a benchmark for you, 38,290. This is on a 225.0. You see it's pretty, uh, very comparable with the MI3 and the Z2, but does fall shy of where the Galaxy Note 3 is with the Snapdragon 801. No, I'm sorry, let me correct myself. I'm pretty sure the Note 3 is a Snapdragon 800. Anyways, your Galaxy S5, that's Snapdragon 801. So you see where it falls there, and uh, it still does pretty good. And this is uh, by no means any kind of conditional testing. This was just a benchmark ran, phone normal usage, uh, not optimal conditions to try to get a better benchmark number. So this is about what you'd expect to get. And this is, again, on Dalvik. So before I conclude this video, uh, I almost forgot one more thing that I noticed when using this ROM, and that was the recents. Uh, you see now it's working, but let's go into an application here, and let's pop out of it. Oh, we're going to work this time, let's open another application up over here. Of course I'm not going to be able to replicate this, of course I'm not. Uh, what seems to happen sometimes is when you go back, this is blank, but you know you have applications open. So you have to go back into it a second time, and they do show then. Uh, it happens more often than not, of course, on video it wouldn't replicate for me, go figure. But um, you can see here, because we did a reboot here, and by the way, the reboot did take, I'm going to go ahead and show you, it took 27 seconds. So not the fastest boot time, um, and I'm not sure why, but uh, 27 seconds is by no means the fastest boot time, but not a big deal unless you're rebooting your phone a whole lot. And uh, I do recommend, actually, with this ROM to reboot your phone every couple days. I hope you found this video useful. Again, sorry for the delay in getting these out here. And uh, I promise to get right back on this, and I have quite a few more videos that I want to make, as well as some that I had before I tested this ROM for so long. Then I'm going to give it another fair couple days with an update that was released for AICP before I release a ROM review for what <laughs> was 4.0, so not really fair. If you found this useful, please give me a thumbs up. If you have questions, please ask. Uh, as you know, you can look at my history. I always try to get back to you. It might take me a little while longer than I'd like, but trust me, it eats me alive when there's comments sitting there that I haven't gotten a chance to answer yet. Thanks. I hope you enjoyed.